Hi, my name is Dr. Mark Kahn in Newport Beach, California. I'm a specialist in obstetrics and gynecology and reproductive endocrinology and infertility. I specialize in all aspects of female infertility, in vitro fertilization, donor egg, donor sperm, gestational cares, and any other fertility treatments that you may need. Originally, I'm from Southern California. I did my medical school training at Loyola University in Chicago. I did my residency in OBGYN in Good Samaritan Regional Medical Center in Phoenix, Arizona, and my fellowship in reproductive endocrinology and infertility at Cornell in New York. I've worked at many major medical teaching institutions and have been on faculty at Cornell, the University of Washington in Seattle, as well as here at UC Irvine Medical Center. The services we provide are fertility treatment for patients that are trying to get pregnant, a full service including IVF, uh, intrauterine inseminations, donor sperm, donor egg, gestational carrier services, as well as all medical and surgical treatments for fertility. Fibroids are smooth muscle growths that are considered benign tumors. These are muscle growths that arise from the muscle wall of the uterus. It's a very common condition to have a fibroid. Approximately half of all women will have a fibroid at some point in their life. So fibroids can come in several different types. There are three main types of fibroids based on the location of the fibroid. So fibroids can be found inside the cavity of the uterus itself where the baby actually grows. It can be found in the muscle wall called transmural fibroids, which are probably the most common. And they can be attached to the muscle on the outside of the uterus. Um, and so they can be in any of those three locations. We diagnose fibroids using an ultrasound first. With an ultrasound, we can look at the size and location of the fibroid and determine whether or not that may affect pregnancy. If we need to further diagnose the fibroid, we can use MRIs or even hysteroscopies. We do that here in the office where we'll actually look with a fiber optic camera to see if there's a fibroid located within the internal cavity of the uterus. Fibroids can affect your fertility. Sometimes fibroids can cause a structural blockage for a normal process that is required to get pregnant. For example, if a fibroid compresses a fallopian tube, then that fallopian tube may not function normally and the egg and the sperm can't get together. Also, if a fibroid is located inside the uterine cavity where the embryo normally implants, then the embryo won't be able to grow and implant in that location and the fibroid can block the growth of the pregnancy in that respect. In larger fibroids in the muscle wall of the uterus, sometimes the blood flow is altered and so the overall blood flow of the uterus can be altered which in turn can affect implantation of the embryo as well. We see quite a lot of women here that have fibroids and sometimes these fibroids do affect their fertility. If the fibroid is in a location where we think it can affect the fertility, we'll actually treat and remove that fibroid as necessary. So we do see it quite a bit. There are some patients who have fibroids that don't need surgical treatment or um, can be managed conservatively, and so it really depends on the size and location of the fibroid. But overall, many women have fibroids. We probably see um, at least 10 to 15 to 20 percent of those patients um, here on a regular basis having some sort of fibroids present. The first step for a woman to uh, try and become pregnant when they're diagnosed with fibroids is to have a thorough evaluation of the fibroid, both for the size and the location of the fibroid. Depending on the type of fibroid, different treatments may be necessary for that patient who want to become pregnant. For example, if the fibroid is inside the uterine cavity, we will often remove that fibroid with a hysteroscopic procedure before we attempt pregnancy. Sometimes if the fibroid is a certain size and in the muscle wall and not affecting the cavity itself, usually we'll let that go and not do any surgery at that point in time because many of those patients can achieve pregnancy on their own. Fibroids will typically grow in pregnancy. Fibroids 
get their blood flow from the uterus. And during pregnancy, the uterus is more vascular and has more blood flow, so it's natural that the fibroids would grow. In addition, the fibroids can grow from a higher estrogen level as well. And so because of that, it's very common to see the fibroids grow during pregnancy. Usually if the fibroids in a location where it may not affect the pregnancy itself, it may not be a problem. However, sometimes the fibroid can cause a problem during the pregnancy. If the fibroid is close to the baby in early pregnancy, it may affect the placenta area where the pregnancy actually attaches to the uterus, which may affect the blood flow to the baby itself. Additionally, if the fibroid is in an area where in the muscle wall of the uterus that is obstructing, it may actually impinge the growth or even the delivery of the baby at the time of delivery. There are many treatment options available for women with fibroids suffering from infertility. First of all, we'll take a look and see, should the, we, do we even need to do anything? Sometimes we can manage these fibroids with conservative treatment and may not have to do any physical or medical treatment. There are medical treatments available where we suppress the hormones that may grow the fibroids. For example, Lupron is a medication that blocks estrogen production, which may temporarily shrink the fibroids. So sometimes we'll use that before an IVF cycle, for example. Um, there are other medications like birth control pills, which may temporarily keep the fibroid from growing, um, but may not be typically as effective as Lupron. Um, in terms of surgery, there are some surgical options for fibroids. The most common surgical option for a fibroid is to remove it. And there are several different types of surgeries that are available. One is a laparoscopic myomectomy. Myomectomy means removal of the fibroid. There's also a traditional laparotomy, which is like a C-section type incision on the abdomen to go in and physically remove the fibroid. And there are some newer techniques um, like robotic assisted laparoscopic surgery. Uh, robotic assisted surgery is still done nowadays, but it's done less frequently because there has been an issue, an FDA warning, with an instrument called the Morselator used during that procedure. Back in 2014 there was an FDA warning, so that procedure is done less frequently nowadays than it was in the past. Artery embolization of the fibroid or uterine artery embolization for the fibroid is an alternative for the treatment of fibroids. However, in patients achieving pregnancy that want to get pregnant after their fibroid is treated, this is not the first line of treatment because when you do an artery embolization, you'll put a plug in the blood vessels that supply the uterus. And once that may kill off the fibroid, but once you become pregnant, you don't want that to affect the blood flow to the uterus when the baby is trying to grow. So it's currently not recommended to do uterine uh, artery embolization for patients that are trying to get pregnant. If a patient is done with their childbearing, then it's certainly a good, less invasive treatment than surgery for those fibroids. But if we're trying to achieve a pregnancy in the future, we stay away from the artery embolization techniques. There are some risks with surgery for fibroid removal, especially with laparotomy, and that would include um, abdominal adhesions or scar tissue formed at the time of surgery. Um, however, most procedures have minimal risks in terms of that and it's still better to remove the fibroid than to keep it inside for some patients when they're trying to get pregnant. We perform all treatments for fibroids for surgical removal of fibroids. So we do a lot of hysteroscopic removal of fibroids. We do uh, surgical removal of fibroids. Um, I'm fully trained and certified in robotic assisted laparoscopic removal of fibroids. But some fibroids actually don't need surgery. So when you come in, we'll take a look and see if those fibroids are actually going to make, be a problem for the pregnancy. And sometimes we'll just watch them because many patients with fibroids can achieve a pregnancy without any surgery or treatment. Some people ask if fibroids occur in my family, should I try to get pregnant earlier? And I think it's always a good idea that people should try and get pregnant earlier, with or without fibroids. But certainly with fibroids, it makes it easier to get pregnant if we don't have to treat the fibroids in the first place. So if you don't need surgery or if you don't have a very large fibroid, your pregnancy will be smoother and easier um, if you get started. Also because of age, um, the eggs are always better earlier. So that's another reason to get started early.
I think collaborating with Dr. Harris for fibroid disease is a great idea. The more specialists we have that can treat fibroids in different techniques, the better um, for our patients. So I think it'd be great to work with Dr. Harris. I think the fibroid treatment network is a great idea. It really brings together a lot of specialists from different areas that have different techniques and different ways to treat fibroids. So a patient really can get a lot of different opinions and really tailor the best treatment for her particular case. So I think it's great.